Hi, and welcome back to my journey. It's been a little over a week, I think. Um, I was really hoping to do more videos, um, I guess. Kind of gotten caught up in the whole, hey, I'm a YouTuber. And no, that's not why I started doing this. So um, I'm actually doing this today because right now I've got a little bit of time. As if that's all I, mean, that's all I have. But um, And I was feeling just, just well enough to actually sit in front of this camera and talk. So... Whether I post this or not, we'll see. Um, what I wanted to say is, and, and where I'm at with my uh, titration, I've been holding and cutting and holding and cutting. So I'll post it, obviously, maybe even in the title. So, um, But I have come down. Um, I'm, I'm still chipping away. Um, but it's it's been harder. Um, I want to say a couple things. <clears throat> I, want, I don't want this to be too long. But one, it was interesting that my last video, I did ask people if they had had, you know, if they had noticed that they're, Overall symptoms have been more in the last couple of weeks to, you know, give a thumbs up. Now, again, I know I have 45 subscribers now and this is not scientific at all, but that was the most likes that I've ever gotten by far um, on a video. And so to me, that kind of shows me, and again, you don't have to be there where I'm at. This is, again, my journey, I guess. But a lot of the metaphysical stuff that I've been reading, um, there seems to be some truth to it. Um, and if you want to compare that to religiosity and anything like that, you know, whether it's Christianity, or, that's cool. I, however, however you view that, but I just energetically, I just think, um, I think we all are connected. And that kind of made me see that I think we're all kind of on this ride, this journey. And like I said last time, I think I said it out loud that, you know, this spiritual awakening, if you want to call it that, this, uh, just this, spiritual journey that I believe that I'm on and I believe all of us are on and if you don't that's okay maybe I just lost you and that's fine um, but I, I believe you know it could have taken the form of cancer it could have taken the form of you know alcoholism or a million other things but I'm not downing any of those I'm just saying they're all ways to get to the same whatever for me it's you know this withdrawal and anxiety and you know whatever so I found that interesting the second thing I found interesting was I went and saw my doctor and I think she had some cancellations because we actually had to talk for a little while. And um, we, the short version is I went back to my very original doctor who prescribed this to me and she knew who she, who this uh, doctor was. Um, and I, and when she meant, and I said, he was a effing asshole. And I just, I blew it. And then I, I caught myself and I went, no, wow. I heard it. I mean, I saw the look on her face, like, you know, because I know it's somebody that she respects in the, whatever. I don't know if he's still practicing anymore, but he was respected in the area. Um, and I realized right then, and I've watched some other videos in this vein, <clears throat> not necessarily about anxiety, but, um, or coming off of any kind of drugs, <clears throat> but in that vein, and I apologize, I'm still, <clears throat> I don't know, uh, allergies, but, um, I realized the one thing that I'm going to stop, and I wish, and I encourage the rest of us to stop, is just like, and I don't, I don't do this anymore, which is really, if you knew me, you would know that I was really into politics and how I could give a rat's ass as to which side is going to screw me next. Um, because neither, they're both on the same team. They're all, and this is just my opinion. They're all, you know, it, it doesn't matter what flavor you get. So everybody can keep arguing. Again, the divide and conquer theory, I believe is true. If they can divide us, they will conquer us. Um, that is, I know, being a victim. So I'm, I'm again, I'm trying to release that. But my point in this is, if we want doctors to work with us, which is what I was doing, I got to have a really good, you know, longer talk than I would normally get with my doctor. And she's, again, she's actually trying to help me. And that's, you can't, you can't fight hate with hate, which is what we're doing with these wars. It's what we're doing on this planet right now as a collective. We are very much, we hate anything we don't understand. We hate anything we would, we, and we can't do that. The doctor that I had after that, you know, like I've said in the past, I believe even the one that I all of a sudden said he was whatever. Do I agree with what, how he, you know, how he handled the medications that he gave me? And the answer to that is no. I don't, but it's what he was taught. It's what he believed. And it may have just been the, what he had time for. 
I don't know, you know, for him if it was a money thing, but I think the majority of doctors go into this um, to help people. So I think on our side, which isn't fair because of where we're at and all the rest of it, but I think it's time for us and our loved ones and whatever, we need to drop the hate side and we need to drop the negativity side. And we really need to go into a part where we're praying, meditating, whatever you want to do, sending positive vibes, whatever the hell you want to call it, that this will change, that they will start seeing us as people and not numbers and not dollar signs. And that, because what I what I envision going forward is some at some point we're going to be able to sit down with doctors, and I'm trying to figure out a way to do this as I move forward in, in this journey, to be able to sit and talk with them and have a conversation. And say, I'm a patient. I've lived this. I've swallowed those pills. I I can tell you what it's like. No, I didn't go to you know medical school, and no, I, you know, so I understand the cognitive dissonance between what you've learned and what I'm telling you. I get that. I get that in my own life because I know there's things that I just, you know, over the, you know, in this journey that I've been on just in a called life, there's things that you just don't want to believe and you refuse to. And then until finally one day, you know, life actually smacks you upside the head for something hard enough that you go, oh my gosh, I have to believe that. Not that I have to believe it, but it's not, like, okay, I've now changed my mind. It took a lot of doing, but I've changed it. So I really think with that, we need to be able to come humbly to the doctors. And yes, I know how we want to just grab them by the throat and say, listen to me. But, that's, you know, again, it's, it's like, it, to me, it's like going to war for freedom. That's what we're doing because we're right. Um, and the other side is wrong, even though we don't give any thought to the fact that what we're being told on the on the news and whatever, which is something I would highly recommend people doing, and that's turning your TVs off. Um, you're not getting a story. You're you're getting you know programming, but you're not getting a story. And I know a lot of people say, "Oh, listen to him. He's actually finally lost. He's gone off his rocker, um, and he's got the papers to prove it." Uh, maybe it's just where I'm at, though. You know, and it's taken a long time. I used to sit and scream at the TV and scream at the headline news and say, you know, I'm right and you're wrong and, you know, I'm on the right side and I voted for the right person. And no, I didn't. Nothing's changing. We're still at war. We're still whatever. We're, it, it, it doesn't matter um, until we change ourselves. Until we, and, and, that, and that's why I'm saying in this, in this instance, until we look at the doctors with empathy and say, look, they're doing the best they can. They're just trying to make a living. And we need to find a way to educate them in a positive way and in a way that doesn't come across so abrasive that they won't even stop and listen. Because when I vocalized the way I did, because I was so frustrated, I could tell that immediately shut down the conversation. So I immediately said, no, wait a minute, I'm sorry. And I went back and I said, I disagree with what he did. And I told her what he did and she disagreed with the way he was doing it. But again, that doesn't make him a bad person. Um, or he wasn't deliberately doing it. You know, not everything's a conspiracy theory. Um, some things are just, it's just the way the system's set up, which that could be a conspiracy theory, I suppose, but whatever. Um, we need to learn as much as we can with the way our brains are fried and all the rest of it, but we need, and I wish, I, I've seen some videos where people say, you know, those of us that are sick can't fix this problem. We're not the ones that can fix this. We need somebody being an advocate for us. To, and I've thought about that and I've, I agreed with it. But now having been here for a while, I realize it's going to be us. We know what this is like. We can't describe it to anybody else. Nobody really understands. Even the people that are supporting us, if you have people that are supporting you, they're doing it kind of like, okay. I believe you to the extent that I can believe you, but I think there's other things you need to be doing and blah, 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 you know, whatever they tell you. Because they, and is, that's not fair for me even to say that to them because they love you and they whatever and they're trying to help you. And it's it's all they know because they're not going through this. So yes, we are going to be the ones that are going to have to do this, whether we're in the middle of it or hopefully when we get to the other side of it. But either way, when we, when we come to the table with the quote powers that be, the, the doctors, the pharmacists, the therapists, the whatever, we need to come to them humbly 
and appreciate the fact that they've dedicated their lives and they do have this background and they can teach us as much as we can teach them. Um, personally, maybe we can teach them a little bit more because again, we're, we've actually done the stuff, but at the same time, there's so much positivity in talking to my doctor and he, listening to her and how she's, you know, seeing how even I said to her out loud that I don't believe mental health is really even a, a thing. And I know I just lost more of you. But the reason I say that is because when I first started having panic attacks, nobody did. I mean, maybe they did a little bit, but nobody did. But nobody was looking for specific things and were asking me, hey, you know, what's going on in your life? How screwed up is that? You know, and all the other things that go along with all of the side, you know, the things that where your body is just saying, you need to stop. You need to slow down. Yeah, you're going to be going to college. This is for myself, my story. You, you need to keep working because you need to support this car and whatever and blah, blah, blah. But your body is saying to you, you need to just stop, pay attention to me, and let's get through this. Well, right now we know we go in and I'm, and again, I'm just as to blame because I went into the doctor and even the one that I'm talking about that I hated, you know, that I, you know, that I, I say that I hate, but I'm going to send love to him now because I know he, he wasn't deliberate, but the medication that he immediately threw me on after a half an hour conversation and all the ones that I started swallowing, guess what? I swallowed them. And did they work? Of course, we all know that if you take a Benzie, it's going to make you feel at least in the very beginning, this, for me anyway, it was like, wow, this is. This is what normal people feel like. Oh, okay. Um, didn't take very long to like jumped off of it, which was a couple of weeks in the beginning, because I'm like, I just, I had this inner knowing that I just, this is, this isn't me. This isn't, it's not, something's not right. It doesn't feel right. But obviously that inner knowing went away very quickly because I still wasn't treating the root cause. And it doesn't have to be, in my case, I still, I think there was some trauma, but it doesn't have to. I mean, it could just be the fact that I had never really eaten a real meal in my life where that had some nutri that nu nutritional value, you know, maybe on holidays when, you know, my mom cooked. And this is no disrespect to my mom or anybody else that has been cooking for me over my lifetime because I didn't learn to cook. That wasn't my generational thing. There was McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's and whatever, and, you know, Subway, I guess. Um, so we've all been eating flame retardants, you know, shitty meat, it, it is meat, and, um, genetically modified this and that and whatever and you know so our bodies are just saying I, I can't do this I can't I can't put up with all the you know the stuff that you're I mean you now have the, you have internet we see more fear in one day than people used to see in an entire lifetime we don't address that anyway um I didn't want to get this to be longer into a rant but I just what I want to say is my but what the gist of this is I want to meet people where they are. I want to understand the doctor and know that this, this is what they were taught. This is what they've been, for as true as it is to me, how I feel and how I see other people feeling and what they're going through, as real as that is, it's just as real to them that, oh, you're just getting worse. Oh, this is just the, you know, this, you know, this is, you know, we see this in a lot of patients where they don't understand. They just don't understand. Um, you know, tolerance withdrawal, a lot of things that we, we take for granted, waves and whatever, and, you know, no, they're just getting worse. So let, let's throw some more medication about it because, and again, I'll take full responsibility for that. I wanted a quick fix. I needed a quick fix so I could stay in society. And my last point to this little rant is that I'm, I've realized over the last couple months, and I, I don't want to admit it, but I'm trying to get back to who I was and who I was is not ever where I'm going to be. So I need to drop that line of thinking because I'll never be that person again. I don't want to be that person, to be honest. But yet that's still where I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to get to, oh, if I could get, you know, I, you know, there's times that I even think about my old job. I'm like, I would go back to that. I'm like, oh my God. And so, but when I'm being honest and I, I have, a, you know, can have some time to breathe and think clearly, I wouldn't do that to myself again if, you know, I say if you paid me, but again, because money is still a thing on this planet, obviously I would do whatever I have to do to support my family. But no, not not deliberately would I ever put myself back in that situation with that much stress and that much whatever, and and to take and for what? The car, the house, the the good looking wife, if you want to put it that way, or girlfriend, or whatever, or boyfriend, or whatever it is that we're all chasing is the booby prize. And I'm stealing that directly from a gentleman on YouTube, and it was, I thought of his name, uh, 
I would credit him, but he's right. Health, love, happiness. That's, that's, that's the grand prize. That feeling in your gut, which I've never, I don't think I've ever really experienced, of just love and just being content. That's the prize that we're looking for. That's the prize that we should be ch you know, chasing. But even right now, it's like, I want a Tesla. Yeah, for those of you who don't, because I've never mentioned it, we have solar on our roof, and that's something that I'm hugely, I love it. It's something that, you know, it's such a passion of mine. But if I own a Tesla or if I don't ever own a Tesla, what difference does it make? Especially right now, I couldn't even fucking drive the thing. <laughs> so let's watch more videos on the new, you know, th three that's coming out. But at the same time, I do that because it's a distraction. It's something that I know I'm, you know, if all things being equal, it's something I'm very passionate about. And you don't have to be, and that's okay. It's just, it's, that's one of the things I am. I, I think, you know, the fact now that we have a house that literally has no electric bill because we put solar panels on it. And just knowing that, that if the whole world, that's one less bill and one less running on the hamster wheel to pay for another thing. And yeah, I want to, I need to, I need that to get out there for people to say, is that really possible? Yes, it's possible to have zero electric bill. I mean, we're still hooked up to the grid. So we pay $9 and 10 cents, which is our hookup fee. But we don't have electric, we don't have an electric bill which is a blessing right now, especially. Um, I do have a car that runs on electricity and it's a Chevy Volt. I mean, yeah, well, those are expensive now, but they're, you know, go in and try to get one. You'll get one pretty cheap because they're not selling well, which is what I did. Um, my wife drives it. We're able to fill it for free. But even if we weren't, the cost per gallon is probably somewhere around 23 cents a gallon, you know, even if we were paying for our electricity. Now I'm here in Florida, I'm not out in California, but um, again, I just get off the hamster wheel. And the hamster wheel is the reason why we all swallow these pills and stuff in the first place. We're looking for the quickest fix we can get to to get back to our lives. And then we get into a situation where I'm at right now, and I realize I would never go back to that life if you know if I you know I just I won't go back to that life. I'll find something else. Go find a small shack, you know, people all right now, I'll get a tiny house and I'll go whatever. And I'll just, as long as I'm happy and my daughter is happy and my wife and just, and we can have a loving relationship and I can have friends around and I can actually just enjoy life and not be chasing the next hashtag or the next thing that's out there. But I'm saying all that and, and I know I'm rambling, but it does all connect. It's connecting in that. Even people that I talk with, you know, and actually the people who commented on my last video, and I should have been, I should have let off with this because at this point I know no one's listening, but thank you. The birthday wishes, I didn't mean for that, but thank you. But most of all, just the people that just reached out and, you know, just the comments that you guys made, it just it brought me to tears. So thank you for that. I, I, I really needed it. Um, you know, on that note, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that there. I want to say thank you to every one of you that has commented, and for the ones that don't, I understand. Like I said, I, I it's hard to put yourself out there, but for those of you that did, thank you so much. Um, this is my journey. This is where I'm at. I know you guys. You know, I'm not saying anything you guys don't know. Um, so it's not like I'm you know being whatever. But anyway, thank you. I love every one of you. Um, keep fighting. Actually, no. Keep keep moving forward. Drop the fight. Drop the again. That's really where I wanted to be. And see, it's still even in my vernacular. Just love, love where you're at. Understand where you're at. Re release and let go of where you're at, and it makes it so much better. And I've I've learned that over the last couple of days because it's been so hard that I had no choice but just to let go, which I know is the name of my channel, ironically. And the more I let go, the more actually I felt a little better. So with that, thank you, and I will talk to you soon.